I've been trying to take a photograph of these. I took one last night. It wasn't a very good one. And I've just discovered that my camera, because my phone's getting obsolete now. It's getting a bit worn down. And the camera is not focusing on, like, fine details. So I'm making a video because I wanted to show the light play on this abalone in my little... Um, and yes, it's off center, I know. Um, in my little ebony bead, I've polished it up with um, triple glazed it, varnish, sanded it. But yeah, I'm in love with the abalone, but yes, there's a fault with that one because I didn't drill it straight. It's hard to drill. I need to buy a drill press. Oh, look, can you see the flash of green reflecting on my forefinger? Cool. Um, so yeah, don't know what I'm going to do with that because I probably can't sell it since there's a fault in it, but I, I don't care. I don't make them to sell. I just make them because I'm in the zone at the time. This one's got pretty flashes. Do you know what I wish? <laughs> this is going to sound really opulent, but the Tanya does run to opulency when she, um, when she can. I wish I could afford to buy real... Australian opals and learn how to set them you know clean them and polish them which apparently is quite an art in itself I've been watching videos on that and learn how to gem set like real stones and be a real jeweler ah says she he can't even freaking drill a piece of wood straight but hey everyone had to start somewhere didn't they baby cakes so anyway but I just I love the play of the different colours shining through it. It's so pretty. That one's got a already had like a scratch in the shell. Um, I could have sanded it back even more, but I didn't want to lose too much colour. So that one's sort of got a winky face. And that one's just blue and green and little tiny flashes of all sorts of lovely things. I can sit here and stare at those beautiful colours all day. It's just lovely. I love beautiful blues and greens. I still remember, <clears throat> this was back in the day when I was stoned off my 5 foot 3 mullet on um, psych meds because, you know, my psychiatrist thought they were keeping me alive by... <laughs> pumping me full of antipsychotics and antidepressants and guess what most of the time I was still depressed anyway so that was a complete waste of 15 years of my life but anyway what happened was even though I was in quite a quite a uh, munted down drugged out state this was years ago now I can't even remember what year it was Gosh, it's a long time ago. But anyway, Jared and I and Crystal, my daughter, we got on the ferry and we went to North Stradbroke Island, which is the most spectacularly beautiful place. And uh, when we got there, we got on a bus and we went to the other side of North Stradbroke Island because there's all these like, wonderful beaches all along the way. You can take your car on a ferry, it costs a fair bit of money, but we didn't we didn't do that. Because uh, money for me is always problematic. And quite frankly, I'm sick of struggling. I am. I'm so sick of struggling, but what can I do? It's, it's uh, I just have to accept my fate, I guess. But anyway, we um we drove on the bus, we caught the bus, and like I was quite off my head most of the day. I, I don't think Crystal and Jared notice half the time when I'm off my head because they're so used to it, you know. I mean, they're family, and they're used to seeing me, like, just lumbering along. In those days, I used to literally shuffle along because I was just so fucking ill um, through no fault of my own, you know. Like, the drugs were just not, not servicing me well, not kind and made me actually worse in my opinion but anyway so we get to and by drugs i mean psych meds so we get to point lookout which is a beautiful place and from that all along north stradbroke island beaches when it's whale season you can see the whales going by 
um, but I don't think it was Wales Caesar when we went. It was a lovely, like, I think it was like, I think it was March. It was sort of like the end of summer. Anyway, we went there and it was a scathing hot day, really hot day. It must have been earlier than it must have been February because it was humid and it was really hot. And we're trotting around and we went on this like coastal walkway. And I loved it. I, even though I was shuffling slowly and Crystal and Jared tend to forge ahead and leave me lumber along behind like the old zombie that I was. Not that I was old in those days. I was probably only in my early 40s. Um, but anyway, I'm lumbering along, lumbering along. And that part, Point Lookout, overlooks the Coral Sea. So at one point I stopped and I just stared and I was just speechless with awe. And Jared, who's an artist, Jared's a fabulous, talented artist as well as a graphic designer. But Jared stopped and he said, what are you looking at, Tanya? Because I just had this look on my face like i just seen God, you know, which really it is. When you look at nature and the beauty of it, you're staring into the face of God, literally. Only people don't realise it because they're just so, you know, trammelled in mundanity and have shut down their spiritual lives and it's actually really awful too. It's another cruelty that our society has done to human beings is to have divested us of the spiritual and fed us religious iconography instead, which is, most of it's quite ugly when you think about it, you know. I want to look, if I'm staring in the face of God, I want to look at some fabulous creation like this, made by Mother Nature, who is basically God, really. Anyway, so what can I say? What can I say? So I'm staring at it, this vista in front of us, and I just turned to Jared. <laughs> I could hardly speak, and I said, The blues and the greens, Jared. And he kind of nodded and I went, no, 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 you don't understand the blues and the greens. And of course he thought I was just stoned, which I probably was in a semi-stone type state because of all the meds and, you know, I was getting a bit tired because we'd been like hiking along this, this uh, uh, track that runs along the coastline. Uh, but yes, the blues and the greens took my breath away. I was barely articulate. It was just so beautiful. And you know what? It was healing too. And then we walked a bit further along and we actually saw a turtle, a very large turtle. And I was, I was just thrilled and delighted by seeing that. And then when we got to actual Point Lookout, when we got there, there were helicopters... Uh, going up and down. Well, that might have been on a different visit there. We went there a few times. But anyway, there were helicopters going up and down the beach. And I said to Jared, uh, I said, they're, they're chasing like the sharks away because we had seen a big, big school of sharks, a big one. And it was actually fascinating. When we were on the walk, we were looking down, we could see all these sharks and I could see they were feeding. Um, on shoals of smaller fish and uh, so I wasn't afraid of them because you know we were a bit removed from it but when we got to the beach you know there were very few people swimming and it was like it was so hot it was like 40 degrees so I looked at Jared and I said those sharks won't be hungry they're feeding I said and I'm hot I'm going for a swim. And he sort of looked at me and went, yeah, to hell with it. And so we, he, he pulled his T-shirt off and I, I had my togs on under my clothes. So I pulled my dress off and, you know, Crystal and I ran into the water and the, and the helicopters must have been thinking, what are these freaking idiots doing? But they were good, actually, because they just kept, you know, flying over, making sure that nothing came near us. But at one point, one of the big, big bull sharks started moving towards us. And I was like, 
okay, Jared, I know they're not hungry, but I'm not taking my chances with the with the head shark. He seems to be like is he, he might just decide to have a go at us. So we got out. Oh, and also I lost a, a lovely pair of earrings in the surf as well. So it was a very um it was a very expensive day. But anyway, I still remember that though. The blues and the greens. That's all I cared about. Yeah. And being brave and audacious enough to go swimming even though I knew there were sharks. Because I actually have a morbid terror of sharks. You know, it's quite funny. But anyway, we didn't get eaten. We didn't get eaten. I live to tell the tale of the blues and the greens. I wonder if they have colours like this in heaven. They reckon that when you go to heaven... The colours are just incredible, like colours that you've never seen on earth. This is what people who've had near-death experiences say. I mean, my mother, when she died, she said she was in a meadow and, like, everything glowed. Even the, the flowers, like, had their own inner light and they just glowed. And she said it was peaceful and the colours were amazing. And I've got no reason to disbelieve her. I mean, you know... It's, it was her experience. When I had my near death experience, I um, the last the last one, I didn't see anything. I just saw the inside of my gut because I'd just done surgery and I was very in a lot of pain and I was very focused on that. So all I saw was this big red internal kind of writhing organs, and I was actually thinking to myself, "Have I died? <laughs> Is this hell?" Um, and then I was like conscious that I was on the last exhale and I hadn't inhaled and I was thinking, oh, okay, this is it. I must have died. And it was very peaceful and I just, you know, relaxed into it actually. And then I just got all these like telepathic messages saying, no, 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 you're going to breathe again. You're going to go back. You're going to be in a hellscape of epic, epic proportions, but like you'll be okay. And I'm like, what? I'm thinking, oh no, I must be, I must be tripping on the actual, you know, the anaesthetic from the gallbladder surgery. I actually thought it was just some weird freaking trip, except for the fact that I was very aware that I had not breathed, and a nurse came running in because my thumb monitor was going off, so she came running in and freaked out because they could hear that I wasn't breathing because apparently that little thing lets them know, you know, it was screaming like a little traitor it was. I could have been out of this hellscape. I could have been in a much more peaceful environment, more loving environment, more, more, yeah, whatever. But I'm here fighting on Facebook every day against the demonic soulless freaking idiot so there is that maybe that was my mission in life i hope the holy one or the gods or whoever's in charge of this uh this part of the universe is satisfied that they've tortured me enough because <laughs> i'm kind of done but having said that i'm enjoying yesterday i was feeling really really you know distressed by our current epoch i call it the COVID epoch um, I was feeling very distressed and sickened by it all, by the attitudes of people, you know, uh, with regard to vaccination and the whole shallow, superficial awfulness of it all and uh, trying to force their, their uh, medical choices on other people. It's just heinous. And I, I became more and more distressed as the day went on. And then after what I thought, I've, I've wasted a day on complete morons who if I met them in real life, I probably wouldn't, literally wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. I mean, they just wouldn't blip on my radar. And the only reason they've had any attention from me at all is because they've just been so ugly and awful on social media. These crass, soulless, empty people that... If I showed them the coral sea and the blues and the greens, they just would have gone, oh, yeah, well, it's just the sea, isn't it? Because uh, you know, they're just so empty. And, and um, I mean, even though I was munted off my skull on psych meds, I still saw beauty and spirit and everything. And I'm grateful for that. 
I'm grateful for my artistic uh, appreciation of nature and beauty and poetry and music and spirit. Uh, so the gods, when they created my soul, they got they got one thing right in my shitty, shitty existence. And trust me, it's been pretty fucking epically shitty. They got one thing right. They kept my 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 neshama alive against all odds even in the Jewish community that was so toxic and vicious and in the ecstatic dance community that turned toxic and vicious too uh, let's face it where can I go where I can be made welcome and treated with respect fucking nowhere so the answer my friends is blowing in the wind here I am making beads out of <laughs> out of shell I bought and out of pieces of ebony I bought because spirit told me to make a, a dish out of the ebony. I haven't done that yet because I've got to buy a thicker piece to make a dish. But you know, I was like, now I'm getting messages from spirit, spirit, great spirit or some other spirit. I don't know who that entity was, but... I figured it wasn't a harmful thing, it was just a test to see if I would go forth and create with what they told me to go forth and create with, so I did, and um, I couldn't afford a big piece to make a dish, and I didn't think I'd have the skills anyway, so I bought these little, uh, these little pieces of fretboard. And they're very fairly thin and it's, they're meant to be used for fretboards for guitars but look at the sheet this is with it unpolished and unsanded you can see the the sheen through it so i've enjoyed it even though it's really just plain because i don't know what i'm doing i've enjoyed my little playfulness and my connection to the the earth and the sea via the abalone and the earth via the ebony and I'm breathing light and I'm breathing bliss and nothing else really matters. Nothing. Not COVID, not nuclear armaments, not crazy climate changeling storms that are, you know, rolling in all day and rolling out, not earthquakes. There's an earthquake today and um, this morning in Wellington or across the lower part of the North Island. Um, our earth is changing but I trust the earth that she will heal herself with or without us. You know, it's a bit of a scary thought that she will heal herself without us because we're all attached to our existence on this planet. But if that's what it takes to purify and cleanse and you know bring our earth back to its natural state its paradise that it was always meant to be then i trust our mother to do what she has to do um and i pray in a peaceful loving way of course because we all want to live and sustain ourselves and focus on the next generations so there is that Anyway, this is a longer video than I intended. Uh, I went on a few little tangents, sorry about that. But yes, I have no fear of death. Death is just a phase and it's just a transition and there is always another lifetime or if you're lucky and you get to merge with the Ain Sofu according to Kabbalah, if you've got everything right, it's just eternal, eternal uh, peace merged with the light body of the Holy One. Well, there's lots of things I haven't got right in this lifetime, you know. I've been very, very, very angry for very, very good reasons against my perpetrators. 
and some of them I tried forgiving and <laughs> that was an exercise in hell so I guess I'll be coming back for another incarnation next time I was hoping not but I don't get to make these decisions the holy one there's little agendas that no human can foresee has me held in a tight, tight vice-like grip. Be nice if he gave me back all the money that he allowed humans to steal from me by their viciousness and spite. And it would be nice if he opened my creativity up to the extent that I was able to provide my, my, for myself handsomely and get off the pension and get off this constant wheel of <sighs> deleterious soul destroying struggle but you know the last near death experience on the 25th of June 2019 uh, promised me that I would come back and that I would make beautiful things and I didn't even know what, what they were talking about spirits at the time I thought it was just some weird druggy drug fueled colonoscopy, not colonoscopy, cholecystectomy, drug fueled and anaesthetic type hallucination. But no, who, whomever that angel or guide, because I didn't see any entity, I just you know, was being instructed, but I didn't see anyone on the insides of my organs. Whoever that being was, whether it was my own higher mind, was determined, determined that I create my last hurrah before I leave this planet, leave a few pretty things behind to, for people to remember me by, which is why I knitted little toys for the children in the neighbourhood, you know, they don't really understand that they're just little trinkets of happiness that I want to leave behind instead of all this dark, morose despair and misery and trauma and sadistic schadenfreude that I've endured for years from various entities. It's just gross. Anyway, I've got to finish these earrings off. I've got to put little hooks on them. I'm thinking I might I could probably, because they're quite light, I could probably hang, hang something from them below. I don't know. I have to acquire some more sterling silver spoons and forks so I can make more stuff. And to acquire things takes time when you don't have money. So there is that. But if the gods will it, it is no dream and I'll go with with whatever they send my way with gratitude and happiness and peace. Amen for Salah. Talk to you later. Bye de bye.